we're going to be discussing charge to mass ratio and the experiment that was done to determine this and what we can use it for. So J.J. Thompson is uh, widely recognized as doing this. So he measured the charge to mass ratio of the electron, but this was in 1897. This is before Millikan and Fletcher actually figured out the um, uh, charge, so the elementary charge. So this was the best that J.J. Thompson could do is figure out charge to mass ratio. What that really means is Q over M. See, later on, once Millikan came around and they figured out Q, well, then they can figure out M, you know, the mass. But this is how they did it. The idea was actually fairly straightforward. The idea would be to use a cathode ray tube to accelerate electrons. So you take these electrons here and you accelerate them across a potential difference. So there's a PD here. Just you have a potential difference here that's accelerating these electrons. Then you have them enter a region of magnetic field. In this case here, so they had it into the page here. And what that's going to do, it's going to make the electrons curve. And by the amount that they curve, they could figure out the charge to mass ratio. I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. So first of all, let's just go over what happens with these electrons in this first step. You know, this is step one here where they're first being accelerated across a potential difference. Let's look at really what happens here. So we're going to have the, uh, maybe I'll write it like this. I'll say we have the kinetic energy. So that's half mv squared. This is the kinetic energy of these electrons. Um, after going through a potential difference, it's going to be just E times V. Well, yeah, we can say E. E for electron. Okay, so we're going to have half mv squared equals EV. Well, from that, what we can do, of course, we can solve for v squared. Let's get v squared by itself. That means I'm going to move my 2 to the other side. It becomes a 2e times v. Remember, v is the potential difference across those uh, terminals here. So this is from here here. Um, what else? The electron speed, well, that's going to be in meters per second. We've got the mass of the electron, which we don't know, but it'll be in kilograms, and the charge of the electrons will be in coulomb. Remember, though, they didn't know M or E. They were trying to find, like, E over M. I'm just using E because it's the charge of the electron. You could put a Q there easily. But I'm just going to leave it as an E here. Um, I'm not done yet. I still have to divide by M. And that means, then, if I want to get V by itself, then V, like, you know, the speed, is going to be uh, equal to 2E times a V, a capital V, over m and square rooted. Of course, we're going to take the positive version of that, but I'm going to call this right here equation one. Okay, so now let's continue on and see what happens. Well, remember I was showing you here that after they've been accelerated, these electrons, now they enter a region of magnetic field. So let's focus on this area then here. So this is sort of, you know, this is one over here and this over here will be area two. So let's go ahead and look at what happens here. These electrons now that have been accelerated across, they enter a place of magnetic field. By the way, I love this one. I hear these the rules you need. <laughs> Students like, what? All right, so these are electrons, so they're negative particles. Uh, that means I'm going to use my left-hand rule, number three. So I'm going to use left-hand rule uh, because they are negative. So left-hand rule, number three. That means I'm going to use my left hand this time. I'm going to point my... Uh, fingers out of the page because that's the direction of the magnetic field just the way I've drawn it. I'm going to put my thumb in the direction of the uh, velocity so that's to the right. Do you notice that my palm points upwards? So because of that then I can say the electrons will feel a force upwards. Okay what does that mean? Well because they feel an upwards force and it's going to keep being an upwards force it's going to be sort of a force that keeps moving it it's going to end up moving in a circular path. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means the path that these electrons take then is going to be like this. They're going to curve. Now, if they move in a circular path, well, that means we can use some physics to help us out here. So first of all, let's remind ourselves what's the uh, equation for centripetal force? Uh, that's Fc. And remember, F equals ma, so it's like mass times the uh, centripetal acceleration, which is V squared over R. So there's going to be some radius then of curvature here. So it's going to curve along some you know, radius since it's moving in a circle. And let's look at the magnetic force, which is Fm. Now the magnetic force, because it's a moving charge in a magnetic field, it's going to be QVB sine theta. But because the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity is 90 degrees, this right here then, because sine of 90 equals 1. 
So what does this mean? Well, in our case, then let's just be very careful here. Fm, the magnetic force, will be, remember, we're talking about electrons, so we're going to call them EVB. And this one here, we're going to say the centripetal force is just going to be yeah, mv squared over r. All right, so what? Well, because they move in a circle, and uh, we can actually then use these two, because we're going to set, this is going to be important here, we're going to set fc equals to fm. We're going to set these two forces equal. And what does that mean? Well, that means I have EVB equals MV squared over R. All right, can I do anything here? Uh, actually, yes. I can get rid of one of these. I can divide out my V. If I brought my V over here, it would get rid of the square. So I would have this. And actually, if I'm interested in the charge to mass ratio, then I can say, well, what's the charge over the mass? Let's figure that out. So E over M. It's just going to be, well, V is going to go on the bottom. The V will stay on the top. So it'll be, let's see, it'll be uh, V, the speed, over uh, B times R. So there we go. I'm going to call this equation 2. So this will be an equation we're going to need. And remember, in this case here, this lowercase V, that's the speed of the electron. Because over here, for example, this is the speed of the electron, yes, but this capital V, that's the potential difference. All right, so what do we do now with this? We're going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So let's remind ourselves what we got for equation 1. We got V equaled 2EV over M. This was a capital V, and this was square rooted. Let's just double check if that was the case. 2EV over M, yes, good. All right, and that's equation 1. And we're going to put that into this equation right here, E over M equaled, and what was it? It was V over BR. I'm just writing them all down so I have them here, easy to look at. Because I'm going to take this equation 1, and so here is equation 2, and then I'm going to put it into, I'm going to substitute V here. So what does that mean I get? Well, let's just keep going. So I've got, let's see, I've got E over M equals, well in this case you have I've got 2E capital V over M, square rooted of course, and all that uh, basically over B R. That's pretty gross. So maybe what I should do is square both sides. I think that'll be nicer just to get rid of the square root. So let's square both sides. Okay, so if I square both sides, then that means I'm going to get, well, E squared over M squared equals, let's see, I'm just going to have a 2EV over M. And then on the bottom, then keep in mind, this is also on the bottom. So I got B squared R squared. So M, so I've got B squared r squared. Does anything here cancel out? Let's see. I can get rid of, actually it turns out this e, if I divide that one out over here, e squared over e will be just e. And if I take this m and put it up top, then the other side here, then that m will cancel out one of these. So actually I end up with, magically, I end up with e over m equals 2v, that's the capital V, that's the potential difference, over b squared r squared. And this, I think, is a really good one to use here. So we can use this one. Okay, so this is the charge to mass ratio. This is it. Okay, so this is the charge to mass ratio, keep in mind, for the electron. And again, it's just two times the potential difference uh, that it was accelerated across, divided by the magnetic field strength squared, times this r, a radius of curvature we were looking at before, squared. That's nice, because if you know the potential difference, the uh, magnetic field and the radius of curvature, you can know the charge to mass ratio. And for the electron at least, this is the currently, at least the closest value I could find that's accepted, is this one. There's also some uncertainties on them, but this is the, the best way uh, that we have for this. So why is this important? Well, first of all, it helped them to then, using that, and once they figured out what the elementary charge is, then they could figure out the mass of the electron, so that was useful. But it's also very useful because if we don't know what a charged particle is, like we don't know it, then we can just replace the E with just Q over M, the charge to mass ratio, and again, it's gonna be two times V over this B squared R squared. We can use this more generic one. So instead of using the charge of the electron or the elementary charge, we can say, any old charge. And that means then by how it curves, you can actually figure out what particle it is. This is really cool. This is basically uh, one of the fundamental tenets of at least some kinds of mass spectrometry. So that means that if you don't know a particle, you can just accelerate it through 
uh, you know, some sort of velocity selector, as it's often called, you accelerate it through that. That way, you know what V is, right? You send it through, and then you send it through a magnetic field. And if it curves the, by the way it curves, which direction, first of all, tells you if it's positive or negative, but also the radius of curvature will tell you, you know, with this combination here, it can tell you the charge to mass ratio of what you're looking at. That means you can actually tell what that particle is. So this could be used, for example, to solve crimes and things like that, right? If there's unknown particles or there's a mystery you want to solve, this is a neat way to solve it. And it's using uh, what I think is really interesting because it's using our hand rules. That's why I put this here. <laughs>